Hello everyone. Microsoft has announced that default outbound access for the virtual machines will be disabled after July 2025. So in this video, I'll cover why has Microsoft decided that and what will break after this change is implemented by Microsoft. And later I'll explain the current outbound connectivity methods and in the last, what you should do before this change is implemented. So let's start. This is the screenshot of the Microsoft announcement where it's mentioned that the default outbound access connectivity for the virtual machines will be retired. And you have to explicitly define the outbound connectivity for all the virtual machines in the Azure after that. So the first question that comes to mind is why Azure is disabling the default outbound access. And there are three reasons for it. First one is the security risk. If you are a smaller organization and you don't have network security in place, in those cases, it's very difficult to control the outbound access for all the virtual machines. Let's take an example. If a developer creates a virtual machine, by default, it gets access to the internet. So in that case, you have no control over the data going to the internet from your organization. Another reason was the predictability and the control. Because when you create a private virtual machine, there is no public IP attached to it. But due to the default outbound access, a public IP which is managed by the Microsoft is assigned to that network interface card, but you have no control over that public IP. And in case if your traffic has to be opened in someone else firewall, then you have to provide a complete range of the public IP address instead of providing a single IP address. So that's why it's very difficult to predict and control the changes in the IP address done by the Microsoft in the backend. And the last one is the cost management traffic, which is going out of the Azure has always a cost attached to it. And if the users in your organization who have access to create machines start sending data out of the Azure without having a proper check, in that case, you can get a bill shock also. And due to these three reasons, Microsoft has finally decided that the default outbound access to the internet will be disabled for all the virtual machines, which will be created after September 2025. Now, another question is what can break? First simple answer is your existing virtual machines who will be using the default outbound connection will not be impacted by this change. So this change after September 2025 will be specifically for new virtual machines. However, Microsoft recommends to transition from the default outbound access to explicitly defined outbound access. After Microsoft implements this change and you don't have explicit outbound access defined in your environment, then all the internet based application will stop working. The operating system will not be able to update because they have to connect to the Microsoft websites to get the data from software activation and the licensing because they have to connect to the Microsoft server to get the confirmation of, of the license or the software activation. Now there are multiple public endpoint services like storage account. In that case, you, you cannot upload the data from your virtual machine to those public endpoint services. External APIs, web service calls will stop working because you will not have connectivity to the internet, the security and the certificate updates, and finally the backup and disaster recovery solutions. If you're using the third party where the connectivity is from the internet. So all these features used in the virtual machine right now will stop working if you don't have explicitly outbound network connections defined. So what will change for you? First thing, no automatic outbound access. So whenever you create a private virtual machine, the traffic will remain private. That means you cannot connect outside your private network. Second one is need for explicit configuration till you have NAT gateway, firewall, public IP address or the load balance in your environment that you will not be able to connect to internet or your traffic from virtual machine will not go out of your Azure network. And the last one is changes in the IP behavior. So as I already mentioned, that for the default outbound access, a public IP is provided by Microsoft. However, when you create a NAT gateway or Azure load balancer or Azure firewall, in that case, you have the public IP defined and all the outbound traffic will go through that public IP. So that means you will have control over the outbound public IP too. Now the next one is how the current outbound connectivity works. So if you look on the screen, if you have any virtual appliance or the firewall defined in your environment and you have proper routing in place, then all the traffic should go through Azure firewall or any other firewall. So your inbound and outbound traffic should be through the firewall. 
in case you don't have a firewall you have a NAT gateway in that case network address translation gateway explicitly defines that all your outbound access should be through the NAT gateway public IP address. Now if you have any public IP address connected to the virtual machine in that case that public IP address can connect to the internet directly and if the public IP doesn't have any specific routes then it can connect to internet directly. Other load balancers like application load balancer or a standard load balancer there the public IP is defined and your traffic either on the layer 3, 4 or layer 7 will go through those load balancers. And in case if you don't have any explicit outbound connectivity so your default outbound access works for you. And this is what Microsoft is targeting to disable. So once the default outbound access is disabled and if you don't have any explicit outbound connectivity defined then your virtual machine will not connect outside your Azure network. Now the another question is you have virtual machines and they connect to different path services like SQL, Key Vault, Storage Account but these are Azure services only. So will the connection between them will also be impacted? And the answer is yes because PaaS services are public endpoint services. Let's take an example of the storage account. So whenever a storage account is created, so it has a public IP address in the backend. So your virtual machine, instead of routing through your network, by default, it goes to internet and then connects to the public endpoint of the storage account. Same happens with SQL or Key Vault. So mostly all the public endpoint services are connected from the virtual machine using the internet route only. So what should be done so that we can make them private? So there are three different options. First one is private endpoint. So in the private endpoint, a public endpoint service like storage account will have a NIC card created in the same virtual network where your virtual machine is lying. Or it can be different virtual network too, then you have to do the peering. And once a NIC card is created, a private IP address is assigned to your storage account. And then your virtual machines can connect to that private IP and your traffic from virtual machine to the storage or storage to virtual machine will always remain private. And this is the most recommended way of connecting to the past services. Now the second point is service endpoints. If you don't have DNS configured or the private endpoints, this is an easy option. When you create the subnets, at that time you can define the service endpoints for different past services like storage account, which means all the traffic going from that specific subnet where your virtual machine is lying will use the Microsoft internal backbone network. So that means the traffic from your virtual machine to the storage account will go through Microsoft backbone network but not the internet. This method is absolutely safe because your data is encrypted when going through Microsoft network but still your data leaves your private network and goes through Microsoft network. And the last one is VNet integration. Some services like app services have app services environment where you can deploy the app service into the virtual network itself or integrate it with the virtual network. So when your app service is integrated with the virtual network and the virtual network either they appeared or your virtual machine is lying in the same virtual network then they can communicate easily using the same private channel of your network and your traffic will not go out of your Azure private network. So that's how you can manage the traffic from your virtual machine to the past services of Azure. So the last point, what should we do before this outbound access is disabled? So you should review your network architecture. You should start planning now because this can be a major network change for your environment. Like start with, do you want to implement the NAT gateways where the public IPs will be assigned and all the data will flow through the NAT gateway. There are multiple benefits of NAT gateway. It, it supports multiple public IP address. It is highly scalable and available. In case you're sending a lot of traffic from Azure to, to the internet, in that case, NAT gateways scale quickly. Other option is configure the public IP on the virtual machine itself. It is not recommended, but there are certain scenarios. Like if you are deploying Palo Alto firewall, any intrusion detection system or prevention system, and you want it to connect to the internet, or you want to create the jump box, in that case, you have to define the public IP address. And using that public IP address, you can connect to internet. And the highly recommended way is to use the Azure firewall or any other firewall which you want in your environment so that all your inbound as well as outbound network access should be managed. And from the single firewalls, you can manage the networking rules for your environment. And the last one definitely is the testing and validation because 
Network changes are very disruptive and one small change can create an outage for your environment. So a proper testing is required before you make those changes. Now finally I want to show what Microsoft is planning to make the changes in the virtual network. So I'm logged into Azure portal now and if I'll go to the virtual network. So it can be any virtual network which you have created. And then go to the subnets. And when you create a new subnet, there is an option of the private subnet. It's in preview right now. And when you use the private subnet, the default outbound access is disabled. So this is what Microsoft is planning to introduce. So after September 2025, you can't create a normal subnet. You have to create the private subnets only where the default outbound access will be disabled. So once the private subnet is created, then you have to explicitly define your outbound network connection through the route tables, how the data should flow. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.